Bear with me one second. All right, let's make sure we are, yeah, perfect. We are live on PantheonRadio.com. Love to see that. And uh, I'm just going to make sure that, post that on there. Live on air. Awesome. All right, well, I mean, it's Friday, so I'm feeling good. I don't know about everybody else. I'm hoping everybody else is having a good day. Um, I've got a good friend of mine, Baz Grimm, here with us tonight, so I'm excited about that. Uh, some fun stuff in store, of course. Um, but as always, we're going to have to open it up tonight, guys, with news, and then I'll let Baz introduce himself, and uh, we'll get into that conversation in just a minute. So bear with me. I know everybody's anticipating listening to Baz and what he's got to tell us, but just bear with me for like three seconds, and I'll get through this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, so again, thank you all for showing up and coming and hanging out with me. Um, I really appreciate everybody showing up to the podcast each night. We're doing this every Wednesday and Friday night, of course, uh, from 1030 to 1130 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Just some few announcements. We are live on Pantheon Radio. So if you haven't already, go check out PantheonRadio.com. Uh, these guys are killing it. I love what they're doing. Uh, so make sure you go support them. Find them on Twitter at Pantheon underscore radio. Um, as well as you can go to the website, PantheonRadio.com. Download the app on your iPhone or Android, either one. Uh, it's, it's all good. I'm telling you, you won't be disappointed with Pantheon Radio. So go check those out. Uh, also, a few announcements for community. We had a few videos posted by, again, As TV, posting some uh, guild information out there. Love that. Good job, buddy, on that. Uh, we had some videos from crafting uh, on, from Timmy. So I think Timmy looked at your videos you had, Baz, and uh, took some information down. And Yeah, I did. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I posted her own so I liked it I liked it so uh, just so everybody knows uh, so Timmy was on here with me this uh, last week and um, she did a great job in the lore segment we had uh, she's phenomenal when it comes to that stuff so make sure you go support her and then of course you know VOT doing their show tonight um, hopefully everyone got a chance to tune into that uh, always a good time with those guys the, I think we actually got the wizard and dire lord videos posted on YouTube now today so Yarn thanks for uh, you know doing that a little bit late but we won't hold it against you uh and then as of course I guys <laughs> i mean i wasn't gonna call him out but i had to he called himself out on twitter so <laughs> but and last but not least guys so with the pantheon radio compo um or competition that is ending tonight i believe it ends in 30 minutes uh no I'm, i apologize it ends in three hours and 30 minutes so um, if you haven't already submitted your script or your spoof commercial for PantheonRadio.com uh, at backslash compo, that's C-O-M-P-O. Again, a really neat uh, competition they have going on there, an Echo Dot up for grabs, as well as a heat changing mug. It's just, you know, really cool to see the community come together to submit those scripts and everything like that. So I'm excited to see what comes out of that. Uh, they always do a very, very good production quality, um, you know, recording of whatever comes in. So I'm excited to see what comes from that. And now, we've got three minutes of news. That's the shortest news section I've had ever. Um, <laughs> but I wanted to take time and just slow it down and not overload anyone with news and kind of let Baz introduce himself. So as our guest tonight, everyone should know, hopefully knows, Baz Grimm. So Baz, could you let everybody know, you know where you're from, where they can find you, things like that. And then uh, let's talk about PAX because that's coming up soon, right? Yeah, I've I've got some news of my own, but oh, okay. okay, I'll get to that get to that in a little bit. Um, yeah, so like you said, my name is Baz Grimm. Um, if you've spent any time on the Pantheon forums, you've probably seen my name there because that's where I spend most of my time. Um, been following the game there closely for quite a while now, um, and recently branching out into YouTube and soon twitch um as well for all my pantheon related content so um it's bazgram tv on twitch twitter facebook instagram youtube all that's good stuff <clears throat> now a quick question for you now i know on the forums that i have seen and the first thing i saw when i saw baz on the forums was just you spitting out all kinds of copy and paste material seems like you're able to find things just at a moment's notice. Now, do you have a 
database yourself that you have just like hoarded this information over years <laughs> or I mean <laughs> what are you I, are you paying somebody under the table to go do some research you got like a lawyer's office you know in your background yeah you know it's a lot of it comes just from the sheer stupid amount of time that I have spent on the forums like you know you, you see things often enough and you just like I remember most things i do actually um uh, admittedly have a um list on my phone of um certain like threads that are important but might not come up all the time you know so for for the for the topics that come up often it's you know repetition you know practice makes perfect i guess <laughs> um but yeah, I do. I do actually have a list, uh, a pretty lengthy list of some uh, good threads that are kind of like hidden gems on my phone. Nice. Well, yeah, like I said, I know personally for me, I've had a few ans questions answered as well. And um, even stuff that I, you know, I, I, I'm on the forums all the time too, but even stuff I have trouble finding, it seems like you're able to find. Uh, so I'm always excited when I see you answer a question or give me some feedback because I usually know it's back to a reference point of something that's been said in the past or some other thread that has some more information. So I appreciate yeah. that. I'm sure everybody else in the community does as well. Yeah, I know. I mean, it really is my pleasure. Like I have, I have fun doing it. I love like just trying to dig and, you know, find new like old dev quotes from 2015 or whatever, you know, just, you know, keeping, keeping the community informed. Like it's, um, it's something that I didn't like set out to do intentionally. And I just kind of eventually acknowledged that there was like a need for that in the community. And so just, yeah, I've definitely. been having, yeah, been having fun. Well, I, I mean, I can only assume that Kilson and guys really appreciate that as well. So, <laughs> Um, oh yeah, no, yeah. Kil Kilson and I were <laughs> we, we were pretty good buds after uh, like being forum addicts for so long now. <laughs> well, I will say so. Coming up, I know that you went to uh, TwitchCon and yep. got to hang out with the guys. You know, first fan to play Pantheon had a great time. Got to rub it yep. all in our faces. You know, I, I yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> we got it. We got it, Bass. All right, so. <laughs> um, I will say though, one of the things that, uh, I've noticed is, uh, when these events come up, you know, for a lot of people, it's a struggle to get there. And I noticed that you've, mm. you know, you've made it a priority you've made it something that, um, is a necessity for you. And I think you said you're even taking somebody else with you this time, which is really cool. So, yeah. uh, you know, so obviously for me, I, I can see you're taking this seriously. And what I enjoy the most about that is you usually go in there and you're, uh, you're pulling out some things or you're feeding back to the community. You're giving back with your vlogs and things like that. So, you know, what I see is not only are you taking it seriously and you're going out there and really trying to make um, some positive impact and help the community see what's happening at these cons, but uh, you're also, uh, you know, just trying to dig into the devs a little bit uh, like you did with uh, Synthos. I know that uh, we didn't have a quite good recording in TwitchCon with him, um, but you made up for it when you came back with the video a few months later. Um, I wasn't too disappointed. But um, <laughs> with that in mind, I mean, like I said, I know that you have a lot going on. I know that you're really excited about PAX. Um, are you going to be down there for the mixer on Thursday night? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, I kind of really what I, the, the whole reason I started doing what I do on the forums that now branches into YouTube and Twitch is like, I, I feel for the people that are really interested in the game, but just don't really have the time enough time in the day to commit to it. You know, they want to stay in the loop, but with the, with an open development cycle like this, you know, there's all sorts of like information that's spread around and stuff. And it's, it's hard to keep up with it all. Um, and me as someone who does have the time, you know, enough hours in the day to commit to trying to gather all this information and get it out to the community in a consolidated way. Um, that's why I've kind of taken it upon myself to have that um, responsibility. And so, yeah, so definitely part of that means going to these conventions. Now I've kind of gotten lucky um, with the first two conventions that VR has been at because at, at TwitchCon, um, VR gave me yep. the pass for free to go out there. Um, 
You won so, that, correct? I, yeah, I yeah. Clear that. yeah. That was a, that yeah, was a so, something you won. So yeah, so that was um, that was sweet. And you know, when when that happened, I'm like, oh well, I I, I got to get myself out there. It was all the way across the country, um, you know. But I knew that I had to get out there. And now, um, they're gonna be in my neck of the woods, so it's um pretty convenient for me to get um down there. And so again, you know, I got to do it. So. <clears throat> Yeah, like I said, um, they're going to be coming to Boston and PAX East 2018, April 5th through 8th. And like I did for um, TwitchCon, I'll be vlogging pretty much the entire event. I got a lot of good feedback from my uh, videos the first time. People really appreciated them. Um, so, like you said, too, I will have my... Um, my assistant Sean with me this time last time it was kind of like last minute he couldn't make it um because I really actually I don't think I I don't think I like said this but um I only knew that I had gotten the pass like maybe like a month before TwitchCon which is not like long to plan a trip not at all all the way across the country um from from coast to coast to go like for a weekend you know it was kind of it was a little uh, chaotic there but um, now that we've had a little bit more heads up, um, he's going to be coming with me and he is a much better videographer than I am. <laughs> so, uh, hopefully the, vlo the vlogs will be, uh, even better than they were last time. We learned a lot from, from doing the vlogs last time. So nice. it's always kind of a work in progress, but he's, um, yeah, he'll be down there with me and we're just going to be, we're, you know, we're going to be rocking it. We're going to try to get as much, uh, information out there as we can because you know, when I was out there like by myself I had a blast doing it but it was like a lot of work to you know be thrown into that situation and have to do everything myself so with the both of us there we can kind of uh split the workload and it should be it should be much better so um like I said my youtube channel basgrim tv or youtube.com slash basgrim tv is where those um vlogs will be up I'll get them up as soon as possible. Like even last time at TwitchCon, we were able to turn them around in like a day or two and it should yeah. be about the same, if not faster this time. So I'll also be tweeting out like any significant events or announcements or whatever as they happen on my Twitter, which again is at Basgroom TV. Um, so you can follow me there if you want to stay up to date with that. And of course I'll be posting like uh, pictures on Facebook, Instagram, um, cool. that sort of thing. Just, I, I gotta, I gotta ask you. So you said it was difficult, like to do it by yourself, but, mm. and I don't know if this was ever asked to you or not. Did, for me, you know, did you ever? If I was there, I'm just putting myself in your your, your shoes for tonight. If I was there, meeting the devs, you know, these guys that I'm really looking up to, looking forward to, uh, you know, their game and what's come, what they're creating for me and things like that. Um, did mm -hmm. you have kind of this uh, starstruck moment? I mean. You know, where you kind of lost yourself and you, you, you didn't really know how to handle it because I think I would have personally. A, a little bit at first. And that's part of what I mean, being, being thrown up, thrown into the situation. And it was like, it was kind of ca like chaotic there at first. And that that's part of what made it hard is because, you know, I'm trying to just like enjoy the moment and process everything. But it took me a while to like when I first like sat down. Um, well, actually, let me rewind. Um, I think I've told this story before, but like I get into the to the event hall and like make a beeline to VR's booth. Um, I meet Zinx first, you know, shake her hand, and then like 30 seconds later, she like walks me over, introduces me to Brad, shake his hand, which obviously that's any fan of EverQuest, that's a good yeah. moment, you know. And then like I shake his hand, he's like, "Hey, nice to meet you. You want to play?" I'm like, "Oh my god." <laughs> You know, because I like, wasn't, I wasn't expecting that. I was like, I think you know the answer to that. And so he like throws me in the chair next to him, and we're like, the game's already loaded, and we're playing. And it took me a while to like realize, I'm like, oh crap, like people are gonna want to know about this. You know what I mean? So having to like, you know, having to process everything that's going on and tweet about it and vlog it and you know et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, it was a little overwhelming at first. I settled into it pretty quickly. And like I said, now that this is like round two and I'll have Sean there and um, 
you know, I'll be a little bit more familiar with things. It should be easier. I've never actually been to a PAX before. Um, I know that there, it's probably like twice the size of TwitchCon, so it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be crazy. But I yeah. think uh, what I learned at TwitchCon will be applicable to PAX here. So I'm, I'm super excited to see um, what's in store because VR has definitely been hinting at some big announcements that they'll be making at PAX. So should be a good time so so what i'm hearing is you're gonna give sean the camera and say hey i'm gonna go geek out and yep. you just film me running around like a little schoolgirl for about 30 minutes and then we'll put it on youtube more or less yeah okay i like it i like it. <laughs> i mean that's what i would be doing so i'm just you know I, i'm just saying yeah. you ever seen a grown man run around screaming in a high-pitched voice in excitement yeah. then it's probably this guy right here when he gets a chance to go yeah so, like uh, to do a, to do a vlog well there has to be a, a like there's more thought that goes into it oh, yeah. than one would think about you know getting the right shots and making sure that you're telling a complete story you know with each individual clip put together um and he's he does that professionally so he's like nice. way better um at it and so I'm just all that behind the scenes stuff. That's his forte. So I'm going to um, put that on him. That, that uh, gives me more, you know, more freedom to nice. try to be entertaining and to try to actually like uh, get some good content. So nice, nice. I'm excited, man. Um, so speaking of that, I mean, you're going to show up there Thursday, hang out with them. I'm sure yeah. you're going to, you know, have a few lemonades or whatever at night with them and stuff <laughs> like that. So uh, you know, d definitely. You know, everybody knows Baz is like twelve, so he's not allowed to, to drink anything. So <laughs> they'll they'll bring out the fruit juice. It's all good. But um, so with that, I mean, you know, I'm excited. Do you have any plans uh, like you did with Synthos? Um, is there anything in store for us that we can look forward to? Or I mean, wh yeah, what, do you, so, what do you got so going just, on? Just as VR has their own announcements, I have a couple of announcements myself that I teased at on Twitter earlier. Um, the first of which is that um, that Pantheon community meet and greet on Thursday, April 5th will be live streamed. Um, it will be on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash TV again, starting at um, 9 p.m. Eastern. And I'm super excited to, to make this happen because I, I got a lot of feedback um, from people, including you, Sacred, yeah. um, that, you know, people that won't actually be able to attend the event, but they, you know, they still want to feel involved. And I really took that to heart and contacted um, VR. Unfortunately, we were able to come up with a way to live stream it in a, in a way that would be enjoyable to watch, you know, um, because as VR always says, community matters. And so uh, I think that's really important that you know, everyone is still able to kind of feel like you're there and interact with everybody, even if you're at home. And of course, uh, Twitch is the perfect way to do that. So, um, yeah, definitely so, go over, go over and uh, follow my Twitch channel if you want to be notified when that happens. So let me make sure that I'm clear on that. That was at 9 p.m. You said that was going to start? 9 p.m. Yeah, it's pl planning on starting at 9 p.m. Okay. Um, so before the drunk karaoke starts, I'm assuming. Yeah, I think okay. the uh, the meet and greet starts at eight, if I remember, and yep. so the, the stream will start at nine. It'll probably only shooting for maybe like a half an hour stream or something like that, um, just to give everybody a, a chance to to pop in. You know, I'll show everybody around, and we'll talk to some devs, I'm sure, and interact with some people in the community. Just it's just it's going to be pretty informal. Um, just come on, yeah. hang out, but it'll be a good time. Oh man, that sounds something that's fun. I know I'll be there hanging out, so I'm excited about that. Um, now, with, I, of course, you said nine to nine thirty, and that's Eastern Standard Time. I want to make sure that that's yep. clear. Yep. So, um, for anybody listening, anybody that's going to be watching this on YouTube, you know, over the next week, make sure you're tuning into Bazgrim TV. That's on Twitch TV, um, and from nine thirty or nine to nine thirty Eastern Standard Time, around about those, he'll be doing the live stream there. So make sure you're tuning yep. in for that. But uh, okay, man, dude, I'm, <laughs> I I know I hit you up with that, and uh, it was kind of a shot in the dark. I was like, man, I can't be there. Uh, the wife's got me tied down in the basement, you know, won't let me leave type stuff. So, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, can can you just turn your phone on and just <laughs> live, you know, make it a FaceTime for me? I don't care. And uh, you're yeah. like, yeah, let's talk about it. Let's see what I can do. 
So yeah, and yeah, I I didn't I didn't really know if, to be honest if it, if it was gonna work out because um just the nature of the venue like where we're gonna be for one thing um we're gonna be competing over internet bandwidth with like a hundred thousand other gamers <laughs> yeah. you know and so um streamers you know, bloggers youtubers exactly. yeah exactly they're all yeah. gonna be taking up the same bandwidth so that's a struggle in and of itself and also you know the venue um it's the 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 meet and greet is already booked out they had like a cap of like 125 people or something like that and those are already um already booked so there's going to be a lot of people in the venue and then you know there's going to be other rooms beside it so it's probably just going to be a, a loud event you know and so there's no point in uh you know you tuning in and not even being able to hear me so we had some obstacles to overcome like that but fortunately um we get i think we got it all sorted out hopefully it'll go off without a hitch so yeah i'm super nice. excited about that well, I won't be disappointed in the loud and basically just you running around showing everybody off. I mean, that's yeah, that's so, part of the atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I'm excited. I'm I'm looking forward to it. So okay, uh, so we got the meet and greet on Thursday. That's the first day. I mean, we're talking. That's the first day of Twitch or the past. I know. So <laughs> we're starting it off with a bang. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so, you know, and then as I understand it, and I'm, I've never been to PAX myself, but I understand it is a very big venue. Um, so I'm assuming you're actually going to be there for the event. As it, I believe it does start that, that Thursday. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that, yeah, that's a good point okay. because um, the convention itself, the, the meet and greet is going to be taking place off site yep. um, in Cambridge while the, the convention center itself is in Boston. Um so the convention does start on Thursday. I don't think because of my work schedule, I don't think I'm going to be able to be there on Thursday. Ah. Um, but that's okay. I'll definitely make it down for the meet and greet. And then I'll be at the convention at least Friday and Sunday. So if anybody is watching, that's actually going to be there. Um, if I don't see you at the meet and greet, um, if you come by the booth, I'll probably be there on Friday and Sunday. Maybe Saturday, probably not, but um, yeah, I'll be there Friday and Sunday. We'll be vlogging it up, all that good stuff. You, you better be careful being at all these booths. They might put you to work if you go there too often. Oh, it's already, it, Brad already told me that <laughs> he's like, he wants to be like posted there, like talking to people, answering questions. I did that for TwitchCon. I, I like when I'm, when I was, uh, I think like the second time around I was playing with Brad and I'm, I'm behind the desk. I'm wearing the Pantheon shirt that they just gave me, obviously. I'm sitting there just playing Pantheon, and then people are coming up to me and, like, asking me all these questions, and I was like, oh, crap, these people think I'm a dev. I'm, like, like asking me all these sorts of questions about the game. I was like, I mean, I know the answer to these, so I'm, yeah. so I'm just, like, <laughs> answering back. <laughs> like, and um, Ben Dean is, like, sitting right next to me. He's like, he's like, Baz, if you keep this up, we're going to have to put you on payroll. He's like, take it easy, man. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> hey man you know and i think that's uh but it, but at the same time that's more or less what you know we do on the forums as well i mean passionate people about the game you see them all the time and yeah. i think that's awesome that they're allowing us to to stand in there and to answer some of those questions as a community member yeah you know, exactly so. yeah brad brad says that i'm i'm an honorary dev so i gotta be <laughs> i gotta be right there yeah I, I love it too it's fun trying to like you know introduce the uh to the game to people when i was random brief side story when i was doing like some work in the like the board game industry with my my family had a, a company that published board games and we would you know we would go to these conventions like board game conventions and be like pitching you know our new game to people yeah. you know they come up to the booth kind of like you know at pax on a smaller scale people come up to the booth and you have like 30 seconds to try to like get their get them interested in the game you know what i mean so you kind of got to like perfect an elevator pitch to like get their uh you know get their interest and tell them like the really basic essentials of what they need to know about the game like in a really short period of time um and then you just repeat that over and over and over like for hours day after day after day until you're saying in your sleep so <clears throat> yeah i it's uh fun. it's fun. i unfortunately know what you're talking about i uh i dabbled in some some marketing uh back in my day and and um i could i could quote my opening like three lines in my sleep with my eyes closed <laughs> yeah. like i could tell you all these little details that i don't need to know and it was but at the same time 
it was fun. I had a blast with it. So I, it I, I get fun. it. I, you know, it's exciting. So, okay, yeah. Thursday. What about Friday? You said you're going to be there hanging out with the guys. Uh, you got any plans yeah. for Friday? You going to run around and, uh, you know, shout Pantheon into the rafters or what's going on? Uh, you know, actually, now that you mentioned that, I I, <laughs> I have an idea. I'm, I can't, like, confirm this, but I have an idea to, like, if I have some free time, like, away from the booth, I'm just going to go up to random people and just start talking to them about pantheon and like obviously record that too try to like oh go you out better as like a like a jehovah's witness for pantheon <laughs> <laughs> like and just try to like you know rope them into it so i, I have might you heard that. about pantheon <laughs> do you have a moment to speak about our lord and savior brad mcquade <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure um, that would go over well <laughs> we'll see we'll see if i have time if i have time i'll do that but um uh, other than that i um i guess that brings me to my second announcement which i don't know which day it's going to happen yet but i can i got to go ahead to announce it and i'm super excited that um we're going to be getting a lot of new class information at pax and I'm even more excited because I have the honor of being the one to actually conduct that discussion. So I'm going to be sitting down with uh, Chris Joppa Perkins, the creative director at PAX. We're going to sit down and we're just going to go through every single class in the game, all 12 classes. This includes, oh, man. of course, the classes that, you know, there's, there's some that we currently don't know anything about, like Paladin, Dire Lord, Summoner, Druid. All of them. We're finally going to be able to learn a little bit about what these classes are all about. Um, and even for the classes that we do um, already know a little bit more about, I'll still try to get like at least one little morsel of new information uh, about every class, so that you know everybody feels like they learned something about the new favorite class. So, so let me stop you right there. If you haven't yeah. already, guys, whether you're watching this, listening to this, doesn't matter. You better go follow Bazgrim TV because as soon as that's posted, I'm sure everybody's going to be blowing up trying to find yeah. the latest and greatest. We've been waiting on class information <laughs> yeah. for like ever. I know. <laughs> I, mean, Dude, I, I, I can't wait. I was, I was talking to, to Joppa the other day and he's ready to start dropping some bombs on us. Oh, so I will, you. Uh, you know, I'll absolutely will be recording it and then, um, give it a quick edit and then post it on my YouTube channel, like as soon as freaking possible. That's going to be priority one. Because like you said, I know a lot of people have been yep. uh, looking forward to that. So again, youtube.com slash Bazgrim TV, you will only be able to find that new info there. So I, I can't wait to, to talk to him, get that, that out to y'all. Like it, 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 as far as like expectations go, like it's not going to be like a super in-depth analysis of every single class. Um, it's gonna be more like a brief overview um, of all of the classes, so that we can get a better idea. And then I'm sure um, Joppa, like after PAX, will be going a little bit more in depth to the classes. But this will be a nice like primer introduction to everybody's uh, favorite class. I I know on Twitter today actually Joppa hinted he just posted yeah. this like really cryptic. Um, description of the dire lord that we've actually already seen but yep. like that was it on that um and in the state of the game i think they hinted about a like more in-depth um class reveal coming at pax so i don't even know i don't even know for sure to be honest but my, it seems like um the dire lord specifically is going to be getting some um more in-depth information much needed love PAX. Yeah, definitely. I know there's a lot of people that are excited about that, but yeah. have no fear. Whatever, regardless of what your favorite class is, I will be hitting on that class and we'll be learning something new about them. Nice, nice. I'm personally probably more excited than anybody. Um, so, I I mean, you, you know, I know everybody out there is jumping for joy right now, but I'll be the one that's... Uh, <laughs> I'll be bugging you on a daily basis. Hey, when when are you posting? When are you posting? I need to know, I know. this. So I know. Uh, <laughs> no, like um, I said, I mean that when when the time comes, that's going to be like top priority for us to get that out. Oh, absolutely. That you see, I'm going to put a request into you right now. I'm just going to say, look, I I love your your vlogs and I want to see your vlogs, but can mm -hmm. you put them after 
the class information, you know? <laughs> no, no, I'm actually, uh, no, I'm dead serious. I mean, like, if that's, if I have to decide, like, whether we should work on editing the class video or a vlog, it's absolutely going to be the class video. The vlogs can wait. And uh, Chobo says, find a funny way to throw a bard question near the end. I'm not going to lie, I'm actually already planning on asking about bards <laughs> and necros. So, like, we're hitting everything. Nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm super excited about that. Okay, so we got a live stream on Thursday. We got a potential, uh, potentially one of the two days after that that you're going to be there. Uh, you sitting down with Joppa and talking about classes and getting that on YouTube, you know, in the week prior or so. Um, and mm -hmm. we'll all eagerly be anticipating that, of course. Uh, is there anything yeah. else? I mean that's huge already you know so if there's nothing else man i'm i get it because that's major <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think i think that's so far that's that's what i have planned is um the live stream and i i should mention too that if you can't um tune into the live stream we'll be recording that as well and uploading that to youtube afterwards so Perfect. even if you can't interact in real time um you can at least watch the the replay of that on YouTube after. So there'll be that, the live stream, the recording of that, and the class information interview, and then vlogs. And like I said, maybe some other random shenanigans that go on there. I don't know. We'll have to kind of kind of play it by ear. But so far, that's what I have planned. Oh man, I, I'm I'm good with that. You can just cut it off right there, and we're good. <laughs> we're we're happy. So wow, I. Uh, I was I, I knew that we were gonna have some good information tonight, but I wasn't quite expecting that. I'm excited, man. I'm looking forward to it. I know everybody else is. Um, so on that note, you know, looking at packs again, that's from April 5th to April 8th, coming up in just a week time frame. Is it really already? Yeah, April? it's like yes, yeah. Today's Friday. Yeah, that wow, that sunk in. <laughs> yeah, a week from today, I will be at packs. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's uh. That's quick. <laughs> Um, yeah, it has come up fast. Yeah, so uh, let's see here. We got six days sell packs. Well, in the meantime, uh, I did have a few questions, and I guess I can kind of lead into those. So speaking of classes, I had somebody ask me a question the other day, and I found it really interesting. And um, so I'll kind of drift off of the, the hype train there of packs and everything like that. Okay. And uh, I want to ask you a question for an opinion because this is something, you know, maybe you can think of. I don't know if – any of this conversation will come up during your other adventures, but um, I know that we've heard a little bit about epic weapons and things in the past, and I had a question asked last stream where someone asked me about uh, epic weapons. Will potentially, let's say a ranger, I'll use a ranger example. There's somebody that has a, potentially a bow or some melee weapons. Um, it, let's say rangers and EQ had swords, uh, but they also had bows. Like, you know, th they can go both ways maybe. So we'll look at them as a hybrid. We'll theoretically right now until we find out more of course on your videos of what's i think going on with well, that. well uh, in uh, the in the stream with jim lee brad i think whether intentionally or inadvertently labeled rangers as a hybrid so yeah yeah, to, yeah to he be fair he definitely said it uh, so um <laughs> Uh, but no, I'm like I said, I'm actually really interested in a ranger myself, listening very closely for those little details. Um, and when I did hear that, I was excited about it. But they had the question again for epic quest when it comes to to classes, and you know potentially um, you as an individual, what is your opinion on something like an epic quest where you get to choose whether that end result is say a bow for a ranger? Maybe that's something that you prefer over the melee, or maybe it's the melee piece of it um do you have any thoughts around this because you know we're speaking of classes and looking at that and i heard that question i never thought about it i never considered that that was always something that just never crossed my plane of thought uh, i just thought it was yeah. interesting yeah that, uh, yeah that is a good question um i can see i can see pros and cons to both because i i mean it, it's good to have an option um as far as your reward is like either that could be through like you do a quest and then when you get to the the end of the quest like a reward window pops open and then you have you just pick which one you want i think that's probably what most people are familiar with but i could also foresee a situation where like maybe you have two separate quests that are available to you but like once you maybe once you start one it locks you out of the other um so you can only 
do one, but really the like the storylines for each one of those quests are completely different. I think something like that would probably make more sense in a situation where like the pl- like the the story of this quest is that you have to reforge Andril, the flame of the West, and you have to like go collect the the shards of Narsil from around the world and bring them to some you know master crafter that can reforge the blade. You know, what I mean? like quests like that where the story itself is tied to the reward. Um, I think that would be cool. I think that would make sense. Um, But at the same time, you know, that's more content that they have to create. And then you have to make sure that both of those quests are balanced. You know, if it's enough of a struggle to make sure that the, the warrior um, epic quest is as difficult as the cleric epic quest, yeah. But then if you have multiple epic quests within the cleric, cleric quest and you have to make sure that cleric quest number one is as difficult as cleric quest number two, it's just it's just more work. So like I said, there's there's pros and cons to it. Um, yeah, well, and I'll say this. So I thought about it a little more, too. And I guess where I landed was, you know, if I see the same slot being utilized, like if I see a one headed weapon and I get to the end of it, um, then potentially I can ask that creator of it, okay, I want a mace instead of a sword. Can you make the material that I've gathered for you into this? And, you know, that was where I was like, I like your story idea, though. I like the fact that you're really, you're envisioning what you want as an end result, and because of that, materials change. I like that. I didn't quite think of that, but that's really neat. Now, I think that would be a lot, it would would really be a lot to overcome or to to think of, and it would be a very big decision on the user's part. Um, mm-hmm. maybe to the fact of, you know, like you said, you could either have one where it locks it down once it's done, or potentially you could have where you have the ability or the capability of doing multiple, but you can only use one at a time. I mean, there's no, you know, because of the way the, the weapon or the, the item is, um, uh, because of the, the power of it, I guess you could say, uh, you're, mm-hmm. you can only handle one at one at a time or something like that to that effect so that, That's you know, true. you don't become too overpowerful, but you have additional content you could create off of that. I don't know. It, it was it was a random thought, random question, and I, I thought it was really neat. I uh, I knew that we were talking about classes a little bit, and I was like, man, I want to bring that one up. Uh, just because I think it sparks a lot of really interesting options for you know creative content towards yeah. that end of the spectrum. Yeah. I think in general, giving players option, multiple options is a good thing. You know, so that there isn't one particular play style that is then deemed like better. You know, like even like a yeah. warrior where, you know, you have an epic quest where you could get a two handed sword or you could get two one handed swords that you could dual wield. Um, you know, you don't want it to be like, okay, the only warrior epic quest is for a two handed sword. So if you're like been leveling up your dual wield skill all 50 levels, you're just kind of screwed. You know what I mean? That those sorts of situations should be avoided. Um, well, and that's your so, play style. I yeah, mean, if uh, if you just like that play style, if you just like swinging two daggers around as a warrior for some odd reason, I don't know. Maybe you do. <laughs> uh, if you know, I, I get it. You know, maybe you want two, uh, you know, uh, one-handed weapons versus a two-hander. That makes perfect sense to me. So yeah, I get it. Absolutely, I think that that's options are good. Too many options get a little bit. Finnick yeah, at times. you have to keep it within reason. It's uh, you know, gotta always find that that balance. So I always see the the best answer is somewhere in between those two extremes. <laughs> but to be honest, like what I'm more interested in are epic abilities because Ooh. we know that they're gonna be in the game. They mentioned it way back in December 2016. Now, um, but we don't really. Know- they haven't really brought it up since then, and we don't really know much about them. And um, I'd like to learn more about what those are, because that throws a whole extra wrench into the equation. <laughs> it does. And I've actually, I've toyed around with the idea when hearing that, that, so for example, we have the iconic abilities for the Rogue, Shaman, and Cleric on the website. Mm. And my thought was, maybe that's an epic ability. Maybe that's an iconic epic epic ability um but potentially maybe there's more than one maybe there's multiple maybe, it is. maybe that's a question that will come up in my interview 
<laughs> so, <laughs> I, you know, we'll, we'll have to we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, I'm excited to hear more about that because I think that that's one thing that I hear most frequently myself when people are asking questions about Pantheon. What's the end game going to be like? Everybody wants to know what the end game is because that's all MMOs have been for the last 15 years is in game yeah. content. So everybody's yeah. so curious and so focused on what's in game going to be like, what's epic quests, what's epic yeah. weapons, what the epic abilities are, uh, what raids are going to be like. So um, yeah, I'm excited to see what information you can dig up on the classes because i think up until this point the two biggest questions i've had asked myself or uh what's the end game going to be like and what are the classes like i you know i have said no yeah. information on classes so yeah Ev yeah every everybody wants to know what their you know how their class is going to play like it, it applies yep. to literally everyone i see that all the time you know people are like when's new class information going to be posted i see, like just like you i see that all the time um, so I'm hoping that um, that this interview will spur a lot of really good discussion in the community about um, you know, and especially since some of the, some of the classes um, might turn out being not really what we expected. You know what I mean? Like, yes. uh, like even the, like the the dire lord and the summoner um, come to mind too because we know next to nothing about them. Um, but people just naturally are really quick to try to um, draw comparisons to whatever they're most familiar with, whether it be like the magician in EverQuest or, you know, the the Shadow Knight. But we really just have to wait and see, you know, how much that's actually true. So he kind of he might throw us some curveballs, which make it even more interesting. So I'm, I'm definitely really looking forward to the discussion that comes out of that. Yeah, I'm. Uh... I'll, I'll not throw my theory crafting in there about the classes that I've I've had myself, <laughs> but um, I actually go looking at a few of the classes that we haven't heard any information about, and I'm actually looking at them in, in opposite directions that most people are. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. on the far left end of the spectrum when it comes to you know what this class is potentially going to be. So I'm curious myself because if I'm wrong, yeah. then it means most people are right, and that's that's fine. Um, but if <laughs> I'm right, then I'm like, wow, I, I you know I called that one, uh, so I'm yep. excited. Um, okay. So yeah, man, I, that's a, that's a lot to kind of comprehend it just all the, man, so much. I'm, I can't tell you how excited I am about hearing more about that. Just, I've got so many questions that I want to ask, but I'm trying to hold back best I can. So are you, are you going to be okay? Like, do you need to man, like take a minute? <laughs> I might, I might have to go take a walk after this. You know, it's cold outside, cool myself down. <laughs> but speaking of Joppa, so I did want to ask something uh, personal about Joppa. So, or well, not really personal, but um, very I directed. Say, I don't know. I don't know that much personal. About well, yeah, not personal, <laughs> but very directed at what Joppa does for us. Um, yeah. This week, he released some some new music on SoundCloud. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think we heard, if not mistaken, some of that in the Jim Lee stream as well as the Cook Carnage stream. So I was very excited. I think this is some of the the music that's currently in game, um, according to those streams. So. You know, I'm assuming that he's got a lot more in store for us, but just thinking of the music, I mean, I'm playing it very, very faintly, and I know no one can hear it, but I can hear it. Um, so that's all that matters, right? Uh, but <laughs> that's I'm playing all that it, matters. Yeah, I'm playing it very faintly in the background. It's it's this music, and I heard it on Jim Lee's stream, and it was actually at the intro when he was at the character selection and stuff. Um, yep. And it's called. Yep. Uh, w wow, what is it called? Hold on, I just forgot. Uh, Mystery Awakens. Mystery. Yeah. Yes. So it's called Mystery Awakens, and he's got it on the SoundCloud. Um, it's the second one down for anybody listening. But if you're watching Jim Lee's stream, you, you hear this as he's logging into the game. And just like EverQuest, every time I go to log into EverQuest, the, the music kicks on, and I immediately just, boom, my mind is, is right back, right back in it. Mm -hmm. I mean, 14 years after I stopped playing the game, I logged in for the first time. I heard the music, mm -hmm. and I just immediately just felt this wave of, oh, wow. I'm starting Damn, to remember yeah. things. It's just triggering memories. Yeah. And for me, music is just so important. It's so valuable. It's it's so um, – there's, there's just something about good music that it draws you into the game even more so than anything else. So when I'm thinking of music, I personally, because I stream, I have a bad habit in most games now. I'll turn sound almost completely down. Um, I'll mm. have like some spell effects that happen. I'll have some you know, character animation, stuff like that. 
But for the most part, music I usually turn really, really low so it doesn't just overtake the stream and my voice and things like that. So it kind of it, it kind of draws it dies out in the background in a lot of cases, which is unfortunate because, like I said in the past, it was such a vital part of my experience personally. Yeah. So when I'm looking at Pantheon, for me, I start asking the question: How important is music to me? How important is the sound of the MMO itself? You know, um, listening to it, just if, if being immersed in it, even as a streamer, which I know you're going to be as well. You know, mm-hmm. for you, how important is music for you? And and how much do you think? Um, for, I know right now, I know we're all happy with what we've heard on SoundCloud, but you know, how much do you think it's going to really? Uh, take to pull you in to Pantheon? Is it just as soon as you log in, like you know you did with EverQuest, you think that opening music is going to start kicking memories? Or do you think it's oh, going to yeah. be somewhere down the line? Well, I mean, I'll create, you know, create new memories that are then associated you know, with the music. Because I definitely will always have the, the music and the sound turned up while I'm playing and streaming, by the way. Side note, like one of my pet peeves for... Um, streamers is like when they have like their own like soundtrack playing over a game that's like completely unrelated to the game you know like they'll be streaming whatever game and then have like drake playing over it like nothing there's nothing wrong with drake but it's like i feel like when for me when the time comes to to stream pantheon the the music and the sound effects will be turned up like if you want to listen to your own separate music while you know you're watching then you know you can do that on your you know your own computer or your phone but um i think like while you know while i'm playing like the more senses that you engage the more you feel like you're in the world you know what i mean and so sometimes i'll turn off combat music if it's like really repetitive because that that can just get old um but like overall the music for for pantheon that we've heard so far is like some of the best music that i've heard really in any game so um i will absolutely be listening to it and turning it up while i'm streaming because um actually now that i think about it like sound effects and music really are, are especially important in pantheon because um you have to be like listening for audio cues while you're playing like it's part of the gameplay so you might actually be at a disadvantage if you turn turn the sound down like for example um in the jim lee stream when they were in throne fast and it was actually toward the beginning of the stream they uh, were approaching a rock that had like a face in it and you notice that when they approached that the sound completely the 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 song completely changed yes um and jim jim noticed it like instantly and that's in that's intended to grab your attention and to let you know that that's your hint that um perception might be useful in this area um so that's another reason to have sound turned up and i i hope i don't know if they're going to do this but i hope that they do something Kind of like uh, Skyrim would be the first example that comes to mind where like if you're traveling in the woods and you like hear a wolf howling in the distance, that's your hint that there's a wolf nearby. And so you should pay attention or else it, you know, it'll attack you. Oh, so this is I like that, you know, that's all sorts of useful information that you're going to miss out on if you're, you know, listening to Lady Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> nothing against her but uh no, no. Again, she's another fantastic artist but i'm like when i'm in the game i want to listen to the game when i'm out of the game i'll listen to other music well <laughs> okay so on that note here's something maybe you can slide under the table to joppa as well when you're over there bugging him about class information you mentioned that if combat music you know if i'm attacking every time i attack combat music turns on and it's mm. the same thing over and over and over again I would love personally to be able to turn down the combat mm-hmm. music and still leave yeah. up the environmental cues, but not just environmental sounds, but music itself. Like when they mm-hmm. walked into Ambient. the, yeah. absolutely, when they walked into Ganesha's chamber and you heard that deep boom of the, that's just like, I mean, immediately you were just like, oh, whoa, 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 what happened? What did I just do? What's what's going on? I mean. You know, you were walking down this this hallway, but the sound came on, and as soon as it came on, you felt, oh, I should be scared right now. I, I should yeah. know that this is something that I should be aware of. There's danger ahead, something like that. 
I mean, or if you're, like you said, by the stone face and you hear something, you go, oh, what's that? What, what's around here? What am I missing? Like, what am I not yeah. catching? Even Jim, it was funny. They were like, yeah, the stone face right here. And you see him looking around. He's like, wait, wait what are you talking? Oh, that, wow. I didn't even see that. It's just right, you know. Yeah. So I agree with you 100%. I think that sometimes I turn down like some things that are very repetitive, um, especially yeah. if they're overtaking other sounds like mob sounds yeah. or combat music, things like that. But I would love to have, like you said, those ambient sounds, those environmental effects turned up. I want when those things kick yeah. in to just be like, oh, wow, where, what's this? What's happening? Where do I need yeah. to look? What, what's going on type thing? So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, we heard the in the Pocarnage stream, actually, the combat music was a little overbearing. It wasn't, yeah. I mean, it's not bad combat music. Um, and so I'm sure, you know, I'll leave it on for a while and then eventually probably get sick of it. Like that in particular doesn't necessarily add a whole lot to the experience you know I, i'm sure i'm sure it's like industry standard yeah. now to have an option to either turn it off or turn it down so you can kind of balance it however you want like i gotta think that they'll have options like that um i i agree 100 yeah. percent. so yeah i mean and i know that i i mean i just i have a lot of faith they're going to do a lot of things like that for quality of life purposes but again if you're just sliding notes under the table, you know, you just put, <laughs> like I said, just go put it in his pocket and just be like, just for, for later, just, you know, something to read, <laughs> read when you're at home, you know, at bed or something. Uh, <laughs> but no, I mean, we've had, um, like I said, we've had a lot of great streams over the last uh, few days and I'll, I'll, I'll end on this because we're getting close to time here and I'm not going to go over because everybody listening on Pantheon radio, um, I want to get you back to your regular, you know, music that's going on here but um regularly so, scheduled programming yeah yeah, yeah exactly so <laughs> with that um you know my thoughts of pantheon and you know here in the next week or so i hear that we're looking from the newsletter it looks like we have a new zone that's going to be announced yep. potentially shown yeah, so yeah actually i forgot I'm, to mention that yeah yeah so with a new zone and with all the information that we have so far, I'm hoping that we see something come out that shows that to us that are not there. We yes. haven't heard anything yes. yet. Yeah, but that's I'm my hopeful. understanding. That, that's my understanding. Um, you know, as much as I can get out to the community myself about that new zone or any other announcements that they make, I will do that. But it definitely is my understanding um, that last i knew <clears throat> excuse me the the plan wasn't for them to do their own like live stream like, on twitch where they they show off this new zone yeah. live i think it's going to be they're showcasing it actually at the booth at pax and then sometime after pax you know then whether it's in the newsletter after pax or whatever you know um you know the rest of the community, of course, will will see it in good time. So, absolutely, and I, th I think that's kind of my understanding as well. So, what I'm getting at here is, so while you're over there bugging them about everything else, and you've got the uh, cameras rolling, I'm not saying that your guy needs to be behind you at any point in time while they're demoing these things. But oh, we're know, gonna try. <laughs> we're gonna try. Trust me. The money shot would be, I'm sitting down at the booth playing on the computer and then sean's right looking over my shoulder we're gonna try if if ben's okay with that we're gonna do that i've already thought of that <laughs> there you go there you go so yeah i'm like i said i'm really excited to hear more about that um see what they announce and, and how all that announcement comes out i'm sure we'll find out more over the next week um especially as we get closer to pax you know I'm, I'm sure they've got things in store for making sure that we that are not going can see all of that and get all that information hopefully pretty oh, yeah. quickly so um, but on that note, I mean, we're, we're closing out here. Is there anything on your mind? You got like two minutes, uh, anything you want to share anything? I mean, besides making sure everyone goes and follows you to, so they're updated throughout the week next week. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure, like you said, the devs are, they, I think they've all kind of got like their heads down now, like, and they're working the hard, I'm sure behind the scenes. Yeah. You know, maybe they, they it might seem like there's kind of like a calm before the storm from my perspective um that you know they're they're behind the scenes um ramping up for packs because it's you know it's 
going to be big. Um, you know, the the new zone, some more in-depth class information potentially about the Dire Lord, um, in addition to my class interview, which is going to, you know, be a kind of an introduction to all of the classes um, and the live stream. Like, there's a lot, there's a, definitely a lot that's going to be happening. So, yeah. I'm looking forward to just the wave of activity that um, comes after PAX, all the excitement from all the new information, all the new discussion. Um, so yeah, I guess just to reiterate, to remind people that, you know, weren't maybe not here at the beginning of the stream. Um, I am on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. It's Bad Scream TV at all those. Follow me uh, because I'm going to be your go-to source for up-to-date information about everything that's happening at PAX. So if you want to stay in the loop, um, go ahead and follow me there because it's going to be lots of cutting edge information. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and when we post this to YouTube, we'll make sure we have all Baz's links um, appropriately in the description. So anybody that's watching this on YouTube later down the road uh, over the next week, uh, you know, check out the description below because we're going to have all the links for Baz, you know, his YouTube, his Twitter, his Twitch, everything for him. Um, but again, we'll try to make sure everyone's aware as well. I'll be tweeting about it. So if you happen to not follow him just yet, I'll make sure to tweet out, you know, that Baz is streaming, Baz is doing this, and then you go find him and follow him from there. Regardless, we'll make sure you get, you get to Baz and uh, get that information as soon as possible. Um, but with that, you know, we're going to wrap it up here. I can't thank you enough for coming on, man. I'm excited about it. Uh, appreciate you announcing this on, on the podcast with us tonight on the stream. Um, everybody listening on PantheonRadio.com, I hope they're enjoying this. And I know everyone in the stream always, they're a good crowd, so they always enjoy things like this. Um, yeah. But again, it's fun, man. I love having you here. I appreciate, appreciate you being here and doing this. No, definitely, man. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, um, Guys, uh, I, again, uh, that's Bazgrim for you, uh, the all-knowing. So I uh, can't say enough. Can't say enough about the guy. Um, if you haven't already, again, I'll, I'll say it one last time. Make sure you go follow him. That's Bazgrim TV uh, on Twitter, Twitch. It's everywhere. Google it. You'll find him. And uh, <laughs> from, from there, you know, make sure you're tuning in. He's going to be releasing some really, really great information for us, um, giving back to the community as much as he gets, as always. So uh, excited about seeing that. For next week, we'll continue on with the normal podcast, uh, 1030 to 1130 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, be here. Um, you can either be here on live on Twitch, and that's twitch.tv uh, backslash sacred. And that's, again, sacred with an I, S-A-I-C-R-E-D. Uh, or you can find us on pantheonradio.com. And we're going to be continuing to do these podcasts for as long as we can. Uh, again, thank you all so much for showing up and uh, really appreciate it. So uh, Pantheon Radio, y'all have a good night.